Hello, my name is Desmond Lynch. I'm 23 years old and I want to be a filmmaker. I made a podcast called The Witch in the Orchard and I would like to tell you about it. Production. So production was a little hectic schedule-wise because I had 10 actors who were all quite busy, so organizing dates and times alongside the availability of the studio space I booked and Studio Belfast was a bit tricky. The thing of organizing people is this. You need 100% clarification. You cannot operate on assumptions because assumptions will cost you money. This is a low-budget production. The actors and studio personnel have very busy lives, and that must be taken into consideration. So, for example, say if I contact an actor on Sunday and I ask if they would be up for a recording session on Wednesday at 2 p.m., they respond yes, and I'm like, good, that's all sorted. But it's not sorted, because anything could happen in between those two days, which is why you have to contact them on a Tuesday asking, hey, are you good for the session tomorrow? And if they respond yes, then the session is 100% on. If they don't respond, the session is not happening. You do not book a studio if you do not get 100% confirmation the person is going to be there. Even if they reply late, so say if you send that message of confirmation at 2 p.m. on a Tuesday, but they only get back to you at 11 p.m. on that day, the session is still not going to happen. The reason being, of course, you need at least 12 to 24 hours to book the studio. Again, this is very low budget, independent level stuff. You're not being represented by a big company. You're not dealing with people who could be easily replaced. You are not in a position where you can call up a sound engineer at 3 a.m. and say, hey, can you be in the studio tomorrow by 9? You just can't do that. So you need to make sure your communication and planning skills are incredibly proficient. Scheduling was a bit awkward trying to organize actors who are all based around different parts of the country and all had a lot going on proved bit hectic. I had to record one actor sooner than I wanted to due to scheduling and I had to drop another one due to communication issues. Nonetheless, we got all the dates and times sorted out easily enough and we recorded all 10 actors over the course of a month. I had settled on doing individual recording sessions of actors as I personally found that easier than directing multiple actors at the same time. It's also a standard in voice acting as well. Each recording session averaged around 4 hours which was recommended to me by Craig Sheridan, the lead sound engineer at Amp Studio. Each recording session averaged around four hours which was recommended to me by craig sheridan the, the lead sound engineer at amp studio four hours gave plenty of time to get the performances i wanted going over would result in diminishing returns however if need be i would add an extra hour to the session if we needed to finish up a certain scene for that day but that rarely happened I would set the dates and times of the actors in the studio. I would arrive with the actors, making sure to give them the address of the studio alongside my contact information. That way I could collect them from the reception area. Once we were all in the studio and the equipment was set up, we were ready to begin. The general setup was like this. Me and the sound engineer would be sitting at the mixing desk in the studio, while the actor would be in the little sound booth behind us. We'd communicate with the actor via the headphones they were wearing. I broke down the lines we were running that day, highlighted in the script. I'd give the direction alongside a description of what's happening in the scene as well. We would then run the scene. I'd stop to give notes where needed. Most lines only required two takes, some required up to ten, all dependent on the actor and the lines themselves. I was very wary about not going too intense with the fantasy description descriptions when I was giving my directing notes. For example, it was scene two in episode two of the podcast where Henrika encounters the pale girl for the second time. I didn't say to the actress, okay, you're dealing with this nightmarish eldritch horror from the depths of man's fear that lurks in the shadows who has taken on the form of a teenage girl that has recently died. So I need you to act very wary and a little scared. Uh, it's too complex. So I just said something like, you're in the water with a great white shark, no sudden movements, approach cautiously. It was that type of thing. The reason I did this was because I knew that the majority of actors weren't big fantasy fans and I couldn't expect them to learn all about how this kind of world works because that's just not their job. Their job is to know the character, know the story, depict the character, say the lines, hit the right emotive notes, basically help tell the story. So with the director's notes and how I explained what was happening in certain scenes, I tried to keep it all within layman's terms. With directing, I found it was all about communication. With some actors, I'd give notes and they respond to it immediately. Others, it took a bit more time, so it's not just enough to be a good communicator. You gotta know how to communicate with different kinds of people. Everyone is a little different. Everyone has their own way of taking in the world, listening and portraying what they see. So you gotta take that into consideration. I also find with directing and my research I'd done beforehand was that it was important to maintain a clean, comfortable, professional environment, and that involved talking to the actors extensively extensively, gauging their interests, making small talk, all the kind of things I'm not very good at. I'm not much of a people person, I don't like to speak because I'm worried I'll say the wrong thing and I'm not the best at socializing as a result.
What I prefer to do is just sit in a corner, listen, and observe, because in the end, people aren't that complicated. Every word, every action, people will tell you who they are, and if you listen, they'll even reveal their soul to you. Listening is partially what makes me a good writer. I understand people. I understand how they work. I've studied them all my life, but I've always had difficulty being around them, talking to them, mingling, all that stuff. But that stuff is essential if you want to be a director. It's not enough to just stick them in a booth and go say this line this way or that way. You got to talk to them like a person. Show them that you respect them, you're interested in their well-being, that this is a welcoming environment. And as a result, you'll get them in a headspace where they can deliver their best work. That's what you have to do. The directing experience, I found a real learning curve. Some people were easier to work with than others in means of explaining what you were looking for because when two people read a script, there are two different visions. No one is going to have the exact same take on the lines as you do. Which is why I made sure I had comprehensive talks with the primary cast members during the pre-production phase. I talked to them about their respective characters, breaking down what their whole deal was, and making sure we were all on the same page. That took a lot of weight off of production, and for most people it worked well. Some people, however, I'd have to talk to further to explain what I'm looking for in more depth, and that was the core of what made the performances. The actor had to know who the character was. They had to know who this person was, they had to know how they worked, how they'd respond to certain scenarios, and if they didn't, it made my job a lot harder. But then again, even with actors who had very little difficulty with direction, there were still some issues with stuff like how to say certain lines and pacing and diction. We'd sometimes have to change out words so the actor didn't get tangled up, which was fine for the most part. Volume was a consideration as well. Some actors spoke too quiet, some spoke too loud. It all depended on the scene and that took us time to figure out. When I was giving my notes and talking to the actors, I took the same approach I did with Kevin's artwork. I made sure to bring up stuff I liked before I brought up the stuff I wanted to change. For example, I thought the tone and pacing was great. I think, however, your voice could be a little more gruff and bassy. That type of thing. And after a take, I'd always bring up how they've done well with following my notes. The reason I do this is because acting is an incredibly awkward profession. The whole job is standing in a certain area with a certain look on your face, reading the same lines again and again with varying differences in tone and stuff like that. And it's just so stupid. And the actor knows it's stupid. That's why a lot of them have to fluff it up with some grandiosity about displaying human nature or feeling or something like that. But in the end, your brain knows that you're not Macbeth, you are not Butch Cassidy or the Sundance Kid. You are just a person wearing too much makeup and weird clothes that is being paid to pretend to be someone they are not for a brief period of time. It is an absurd job and it can be quite embarrassing and anxiety inducing, which is why you gotta show them that you appreciate what they're doing. Directing note-wise, again, I try not to go too in-depth with my notes as it gives them too much to work with and they can get tangled up, which results in middling performances. You try to be clear, concise, and not inconsistent. Don't say stuff like, speak softly, but in a harsh way. And again, when you're giving notes, bring up the stuff you liked and show how they're doing well with following your notes. The latter bit I always try to do, unless the performance is objectively terrible, then you have nothing to say. But again, that rarely happened. The first few recording sessions were dedicated to narration. Reading the narration for an entire episode would take all four hours of a session, so unlike with the rest of the cast, there was not much time to go for another take. What we got in the time we'd done it was all that we were ever going to have. In this part of production, I found myself taking up two opposing positions, one as director and one as producer. The director in me wants to get the best, wants to convey the story as crisp and clear as possible, no matter how long it takes. The producer and me, however, had to keep an eye on time and money, and we had a very limited budget after all. Once the first three sessions were wrapped, I moved on with the rest of the cast. Most of the cast had easy enough recordings. Most were finished well within the four-hour session limits we had set for ourselves. Sessions for the witch obviously took a lot longer as she was in almost every scene, so there were at least six or so sessions dedicated to recording her dialogue alone. Even with actors outside of narration, there were limitations on the amount of takes we could do. Sometimes the line just wasn't working and we'd have to go up to ten takes, but my producer brain would tell me that we couldn't afford to do any more due to time and budget, so I had to settle on what we got. Before I'd even begin recording with an actor, I'd read the script, I'd break down line by line how I wanted each line to be said, the tone, the pace, the emphasis on certain words, all that stuff. However, even with my director's notes, it wasn't 100%. Sometimes the notes weren't clear enough, so I'd have to break them down further so that we were both on the same page. Sometimes the notes were just plain wrong, and how I thought a line should be played was not the right way at all. The only instance where I had to book the studio for some extra takes was for some Frankfurt lines, as I thought certain lines needed to be said in a certain way, otherwise the scene wouldn't work. Other than that, the only extra recording date was the credits recorded by Frank Cannon, alongside some retakes of the narration. That was basically it. 
At the end of the day, you're trying to get the truth. You want people to forget that they're listening to a podcast, they're listening to a bunch of actors reading lines off a page, and sound effects that were added in by a gross, sweaty editor. You want to convey to people that they aren't even listening to a story, they're listening to two real people talking to one another. You want people to be interested in what they have to say, you want them to be compelled about what they're hearing, you want them to be moved, and in the end, I think we got all that. In the end, each episode had about 8 hours worth of audio, all of which was backed up on my hard drive, laptop, and Google Drive. You can never have enough backups. The main chunk of the budget went to booking out the studio itself. Actors were all paid as quickly as I can manage. This proved my first experience having correspondent with talent agents, and my experience was positive. At the end of the day, I embraced the fake it till you make it attitude, which is not to be confused with lying. I didn't tell people they were going to get paid and didn't pay up. I didn't tell them this was a big budget production when it most certainly was not. I was clear and I was honest. And when you do that, life is just a lot easier. In my correspondence with actors and casting agents, I broke down the budget, where the money was going to go, and how as a result this was how much I could pay them. And they were all okay with it because I was clear and honest. I treated this small, independent project as seriously as I would a big budget feature film. My organization and communication skills, organizing diets, corresponding with actors and studios, preparing my director's notes, and planning for every eventuality, all of that I had taken into consideration. As a result, the production went off without a hitch. Not bad considering I was both working part-time in a bar and as an intern for a video marketing company in Morocco at the time, but I got it done and I got it done well, and I'll always be proud of that. With production wrapped, it was time to move on to post-production, one of the most grueling stages in the entire project. I'll talk about that in the next episode. Until then, thank you for listening, and goodbye.